Yeah, welcome back to KM6 LYW Radio, the show about amateur radio or ham radio with an emphasis on digital or data modes, moving information back and forth using amateur radio. Hey, today's a great example. We've got a new release of the Digipi, a Digipi 1.8 Mark II. We're going to fix a lot of bugs and add some new features. Uh, let's talk about Digipi 1.8 implements all the data modes we talk about on this channel and it's available to patrons of KM6 LYW Radio. Right, have we done Pink Floyd yet? All right. I don't know if that's a new riff or not. I think we've done Pink Floyd, but um, I think it was more of a, an acoustic set. All right. Digipi 1.8 Mark II. Let's talk about it. So what is Digipi and why do you care? So Digipi is an SD card image um, that you download from digipi.org and it goes to patrons of the channel. And this SD card image you insert into a Raspberry Pi, which you then connect to your amateur radio. Um, the result is giving you access to every data or digital mode there is, or moving information back and forth, sending messages, SMS, email, um, using nothing more than the Digipi, your radio, and a web browser. And that could be on a Wi-Fi device, or I'm, I'm using my PC here today, but it could just as easily be your phone. Um, so that's all you need. So you already have the screen and monitor for your Raspberry Pi, for your Digipi pie in your pocket in a lot of cases if you want to use your phone so let's uh i'm not going to go through the whole installation process i'm kind of going to glaze over that and then we're going to do a whole bunch of data modes we're going to do more data modes um that most people than most people do before 9 a.m i i'm sure there's something clever there but anyways let's see if we can get through these we can get through these in 10 minutes maybe we're going to get through some data modes so the first thing you do is digipi.org download the digipi sd card image burn it to an sd card insert it into your Raspberry Pi, then hook it up to your radio. If you've got a USB-based radio, you like the Yaesu 991 here, the ICOM 705, uh, ICOM 7300, all you need is a USB cable. This little monitor that we put on here is $12, okay, and that's optional. The Raspberry Pi itself is only $15, so don't get cheap on me, guys. You have no excuse not to be using digital modes uh, with your amateur radio. If you've got a dual band rig, like a Yaesu FTM uh, 300, 400, um, you can get a little audio board and a radio interface board. Randy's making these, and to hook up your radio that way. This is, in fact, this has a battery and everything on it. So a couple of different options. You got to digital Org and has all the information you need on how to build one of these, how to set it up, that little push to talk circuits there if you, if you have a dual band rig. But it, today we're just using a USB based radio. So all we have is a Raspberry Pi, a little screen, a USB cable, a Yaesu 991, and the Digipi SD card image in that Raspberry Pi. So we are going to go through this. So let's say we just put our uh, we just booted it up for the first time. What you're going to do is look for a hotspot called Digipi on your Wi-Fi device. Connect to that, to that hotspot, the passwords, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. I know, super secret. And then you're gonna go to 10001, okay? And then you're gonna see the DigiPi web management interface. And you click on Wi-Fi down here, you're gonna enter in your SSID and your password. You're gonna submit that and reboot. And then you're gonna to go to digipi.local or just go to digipi, it depends on how your router names it. And you're gonna get the DigiPi web management interface on your local network. Now, if you're in the field or on the summits, it's gonna revert back to a hotspot mode. And then and it'll always be available at 10.005. So once you're here, you go to the initialize page. And again, I'm just glazing over this. This is where you enter your call sign, your wind link password, APRS password, and you can get all that information here. Uh, what's new this time with DigiPi 1.8 uh, Mark II is we actually support the DigiRig device. And we're gonna support the new DigiPi hat this doesn't exist yet, um, but when it does exist, you're not seeing this right now, this will work out of the box. So this is like a totally solderless solution for your dual band rig. Really cool uh, hardware. And then the DigiRig's really popular. Again, kind of a, a USB device, makes it really simple to hook up a dual band rig. So if you are using a DigiRig, I just want you to enter RTS here for your rig number and then TTY. USB zero for your device file. And then I don't know what the baud rate is for the DigiRig. I have to look that one up. But anyways, all of the rigs that we, DigiPi supports are listed here. 
you click on that and so once this is all set up you click on initialize and then uh, it, would, it will suggest a reboot and then you go back to uh, digipy or digipy.local on your home network and now you are ready to operate so digipy by default boots into aprs tnc mode you can see the uh, stations rolling in here in fact there's the georgetown digipeter that's one i have to manage one of the new things is we get a full screen display for our aprs stations you can see it's uh four miles east of my location and it's saying uh, cam6 lyw wide one rf plus internet um, so we just picked up that station um, on the APRS frequency of 14439 megahertz. But you know, APRS isn't just about positioning, it's about messaging. So uh, Digipy includes something called APRS web chat. We click on right here and we wait a minute for this, uh, for it to turn green. It takes a second to start up. All right, so APRS web chat just turned green. I can come down here and click on the web ch chat launch link. That's what I call it. I don't know. It just pulls up the web chat interface. And this is where you can talk to other stations, uh, anyone using APRS. It could be uh, an HT. So there's messaging capabilities, texting um, on these HTs. Um, so I can do stuff like, uh, I don't know, what WX bot is popular. In fact, I already did this once. I can do 95614, my zip code. And I can hit send. You can see the radio just transmitted it. In fact, this HT just made noise. I should probably turn that off. That would get confusing if it's on the same call sign. All right. And so we just got a thumbs up that acknowledged our message. And we can see that five miles east of Auburn, uh, it's t uh, today is going to be sunny with the highest 62. So we just sent a message to another virtual radio using nothing more than RF and an antenna and our radio and our DigiPi. There's lots of virtual radios out there. I could just as easily talk to other uh, stations, uh, other HTs in the field. Um, there's a station called Repeat where we can get the nearest two repeaters. So this is the APRS web chat interface, totally integrated with DigiPi, totally works in parks on the air, somewhat's on the air, no internet required here. And all of this is being done over RF. So that is APRS messaging, pretty cool. Um, so this can also be an APRS DigiPeter if you want. Um, so if I just click on next to the DigiPeter, you'll see the DigiPi goes into DigiPi Digi. Now we're in DigiPeter mode. So we're going to start repeating all of the stations uh, that we hear in our area that are that require a wide one routing. So DigiPi, so DigiPi is a DigiPeter as well. So that's another mode. We just did, how many modes have we done now? I guess we're all do, still doing APRS. Um, so we've got Linux node services, AX.25 networking that's there. There's an actual bulletin board built into the DigiPi. Um, remember, the, remember in the 1980s, you had modems and stuff, and you could get in a bulletin board and leave mail and play games. I actually put the Zork and Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy on the bulletin board. So people can actually play video games over the radio using DigiPi. We're going to skip the AX.25 stuff today. <clears throat> Let's go to a WinLink email server. So in amateur radios, there's a win, there's an email system that you can access all over RF called WinLink. Um, you can do it over VHF or HF radio. In the case of HF, we're going to use the R dot modem. But today, let's just use a VHF. So I'm going to click also click on the PAT WinLink email client, and this is like your inbox, your outbox. Um, you know, how to compose messages, and it's all web-based um, using the web server on the DigiPi. So that's started. So I'm going to go over here to pat email, and we can see this is our interface. So I'm going to do a connect, and then I'm going to show the RMS list. I'm going to be in packet mode, and there's a station called W6SAR-10. He's pretty close. just 12 kilometers. So when I clicked on this, it changed the frequency on the radio, you might have noticed, uh, 145630, and I'm just going to say connect. And now we're going to do a transmit those packets in AX.25 network mode. There it goes out. And there comes a packet back. It says connected to W6SAR. You can see it down at the bottom here. And of course, you can see DigiPi is going nuts. We see W6SAR going on there. We're transmitting and receiving. And we're we just disconnected because I didn't have any new email, but I did download one here earlier. And um, this is from uh, KDKF6 OBI hosting the WinLink net. Thank you for hosting that. Appreciate it. All right. So we just did email. So we've done APRS. We've done APRS messaging. We've done VHF email. Again, all over RF. Um, let's go back to the DigiPi web management interface. Now let's get to the good stuff. I know a lot of you guys are into the HF modes. Uh, so this is where we can talk to radios all over the world. So what I'm going to do is shut down the uh, WinLink email server, Pat. Uh, rig control is there. Not a lot of things use it. Uh, Pat does. 
um, for changing like the frequencies and things like that, getting the radio status. So those things are off. DigiPi is now idle. So let's go to FT8. I'm gonna click on next to WSJTX. I don't know if we're gonna do all these modes in 10 minutes or not. But anyways, DigiPi is telling us it is in WSJTX FT8 mode. And I am going to click on the launch link down here. And we're gonna see WSJTX pop up in our web browser. And this could just as easily be on our phone or tablet. Make that a reasonable size. Um, again, I can do the exact same thing on my tablet that we are doing right here. So here's the DigiPi web interface, right? on my tablet and I'm going to click on WSJTX FT8 and you will see exactly what I see on my PC and this is going to be on our tablet. So there's WSJTX FT8 operating, so it's all zoomed in, but operating on my tablet. It's totally cool. All right, let us switch to a frequency. Let's see if we, let's see if we can make a contact. You know, it, it's, it's always my luck. This never works. Let's go to, I don't know, I'm gonna try 30 meters. You notice the radio changed over to 10 megahertz. We are on a digital upper sideband right now. For some reason, this Yesu always defaults to a width of 500 kilohertz. That's not what we want. We're gonna switch it up to 3000 kilohertz so we see the whole band. And we should start receiving stations. Um, a lot. What's not clear is the, the little, uh, what do you call this? Not the VU meter, but the waterfall. Um, you can set that up here and here. Boy, I don't know, 30 meters isn't really happening today. Let me switch it over to uh, 20 meters. Yeah, leave it there. And I don't know, I don't know if, if I can find a clean spot. We'll go here and here. And just for the time's sake, well, no, I like this spot here. <laughs> All right, make up my mind. All right, and then we're gonna enable the transmitter. And on the next frame, every 15 seconds, we are going to transmit. So we are transmitting now. We've got a kind of a high ALC, you know, on the, on the, uh, on the Yay, so you got to mess with the DT gain a little bit to manage the input. I don't know. Actually, it's on the, the width right now. But ALC is fine. So I just called CQ on uh, FT8. It's pretty cool. Um, we can also go to PSK Reporter to see if we're making it out and click. It's pskreporter.info and click on Map Display. And you can see here that I am, in fact, getting out. Uh, in fact, i got a polar route over to... Uh, <laughs> well, all the way to Kazakhstan. <laughs> I see my other video about Kazakhstan. So anyways, we're making it out all over the world uh, on this FT8 mode, just using DigiPi here. Uh, let's close that. It says, hey, oh, I got somebody on the hook here. I got uh, November 0, November Quebec Uniform has just answered my CQ. And I'm at about 30 watts right here. Um, let's see if we can complete this transaction. He's uh, coming in at a plus 13, and he just gave me a negative one, which is cool. And I just made a contact. Just made a contact. Um, we just exchanged uh, signal reports and grid squares. Uh, so uh, N0 NQU, thank you very much. Uh, great example for using DigiPi with FT8 mode. All right, so that's it for FT8. We're gonna try and get through some more modes here. So uh, let's um, let's close FT8. Another popular one is JSA call. Let's do this one. So I just uh, said off on WSJTX. And that will go blank. And then I go over here to on for JSA call. And DigiPi will switch over to JSA call mode. So JSA call even gives you a little URL in case you can't forget to just go to DigiPi. Uh, let's go to click on the JSA call launch link. And sure enough, we see JSA call. There it is. And these are some of the stations I've seen recently. You know, we can do all the rig control stuff here. We can just set frequency. You know, 20 meters is usually pretty good. Um, I don't see too much activity here. I'm just going to do a heartbeat. And on the next round, it's a 15 second window. We are going to start a transmission, sending a heartbeat request with JSA call. This is uh, where you can talk to people all over the world. It's kind of slow, but you can type stuff. I talk to individual stations. Um, I'm just doing the heartbeat request to see who can hear me right now. And then a lot of the automated clients are gonna come back and say, hey, yeah, we heard you and this is your signal. Um, so let's see, I, the heartbeat was sent. We are now decoding messages. Um, you can actually see the heartbeat stuff coming back in here on the waterfall on the left. And we'll see those stations start rolling in. At least I hope 
It takes a full 15 seconds before you start seeing the uh, the heartbeats come back. And yeah, we got them. So N6CYB, thank you for responding to my heartbeat, uh, K5MGK. Uh, we just made contact. So stations somewhere, actually, these are all North America. But as you saw before, this could be anywhere in Europe as well. So um, totally cool. We just did JS8 call um, using nothing more than a web browser and DigiPy. So let's go back to the DigiPy web management interface. And again, there's a web server actually running in the DigiPy. Um, let's do another thing. We can do FL Digi. I'll turn on next to that. And FL Digi is kind of like all the other modes you can think of. This does PSK31. It'll even do CW, um, Olivia, um, Hellschreiber. And then we're going to click on the F, let's click on FL Digi launch link right here. And again, uh, it displays the, the program in your web browser. And we should see FL Digi right here. And I can actually do a, uh, I don't know, I can, I can do like a, uh, I'm, this is set to PSK31 by default, so I can do radio test, KM6LYW, and transmit that at 14.078. Now we're going to switch this to 14.070, so we can change the frequency here, and you'll see it also changing on the radio. All right, we're upper sideband digital, and I'm going to transmit this. We are transmitting. You can see the red light on the Yesu here, transmitting, and we just did that radio test. We just did PSK31 operation using FL Digi. All right, I don't know how much time we have left, but we're almost through all of the digital modes. I am going to spin up slow scan television. Uh, this is where we can send images back and forth to other folks uh, on uh, on other radios. The, the frequency for this is usually 14 to 30. I'm gonna switch this over, because I don't think slow scan television can actually do their frequency change. You can do everything else though. So there's 14 to 30. All right. Yes, slow scan television is green. Let's click on uh, SSTV. Um, I know I'm looking at it <clears throat> right here. And again, slow scan television is going to run as if it's in our web browser. And again, this could be our uh, PC or our tablet or our phone. Um, I'm not sure I'm seeing any signals here yet. There's a weak signal there so we're a digital upper sideband that's where we want to be actually it looks like someone's actually talking on slow scan television but anyways <laughs> we can actually create an image here and say load and say i don't know we can do the atari thing say open can't believe someone's talking don't talk on 14.230 you guys and i can say cq here and put in my call sign so you can, you can do all of this. All of this is all prefabricated. So this would be a, uh, yeah, I don't want to transmit it over these guys. So yeah, somebody's talking on 14230, but if I hit play right now, I will transmit this image. And you can actually see your images if you go to World SSTV. Um, these are some of the images that were heard all over the world. And you'll see your images pop up here, worldsstv.com. All right, we did it. We went through a whole bunch of digital modes. I don't know how much, how much time do we have? Yeah, we did, <laughs> we did 17 minutes. We're a little over the 10 minutes I was shooting for, but hey, there's still enough time to talk about the patrons of this channel. The patrons are the people who get access to the DigiPi SD card image and can do all of the data modes that we just talked about uh, just now. So Steve, Andrew, NW2W, that's Mark, Fu, Brian, Chris, Malcolm. Thank you so much, guys. The support's been overwhelming. Um, I really don't know what to say. This has been really humbling. You guys are definitely encouraging me. I can assure you that the Patreon money uh, goes strictly for beer and taking the XYL out to dinner now and then, maybe get her a bottle of wine. Because, you know, the XYL is like, well, you know, why do you always listen to static all day in the radio room? It's like, well, you know, because I'm we're doing DigiPi stuff. We're doing digital modes. We're making data modes more accessible. And thanks to all of these people that you see on the screen, uh, that's, that's a reality. I mean, we're talking like a thousand of you guys. So there's no excuse not to do data modes anymore, you guys. So, hey, uh, my name is Craig. I want you to check out digipi.org uh, to ch get the Digipi SD card image. Let me know how it goes. We've got people on Discord. We've got Google Groups. Um, there's a lot of people talking about this. We've got new hardware coming out. Uh, people are making the Digipi hat, which is coming out. Randy's made the Digipi radio interface board uh, just to make this so much easier for everyone. All right. Again, my name's Craig, Cam Radio Call Sign, KM6LYW. I'm in cool California, and I am clear.